What is the sugar diet and does it really work? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to talk about a recent craze called the sugar diet and how some people have been touting its benefit for weight loss. Is that really possible? I mean, on this channel, we talk about how sugar causes weight gain. And so there's some interesting biochemistry here and wait till the end to see my final thoughts about doing the sugar diet. The sugar diet, sugar fasting, the idea of sugar being a benefit to your fat loss and body composition goals. And so the reason that I think this is catching on is because the nature of nutrition is extreme. Why do people get caught up with extreme diets? Why do people jump from fasting to carnivore to, you know, keto to maybe now it's the sugar diet. Maybe that's the new trend. Well, I think it also could be possible because people are addicted to sugar and sugar tastes great. And if we could get a medical reason to eat sugar, that would, that would certainly be something you'd want to hear if you couldn't get off of sugar, if you're a sugar addict. But always consider the source of the video. Here, of course, we're hearing an influencer talk about it in a balanced way. And the science itself is a deep dive in other research that I've seen about the mechanism of it. We'll get to that in just a moment. I'd like to give a big thank you to our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element offers a fantastic science-backed mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, essential electrolytes for anyone on a keto diet. In particular, their raw, unflavored version, which comes in the blue, teal-colored package, is a great choice. This specific version contains no stevia, no sugar, or any additives, just the three vital electrolytes your body needs, already perfectly measured for you. It's an excellent addition to a keto diet, and more importantly, it tastes great. As you may know, electrolytes play a crucial role, especially for those following a keto or carnivore lifestyle. Element is giving you the chance to try it out with a free sample pack included in any purchase. That means you'll receive eight single serving packets at no extra cost with your order. It's a perfect way to test it out and even share Element with a friend. Get yours now at drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. This special offer is only available through my link, drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. You'll also find it in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. But the idea of sugar being a problem was proposed a while ago by people like Dr. Jason Fung, who said that sugar spikes your insulin. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. This is a very flawed way of thinking because insulin is not a fat storage hormone. It's a storage hormone. Well, I have to take issue with that. I, I agree with Dr. Jason Fung's portrayal of insulin as a fat storage hormone, and it does all these other things too. It actually helps other amino acids and, and it's an anabolic or a growth hormone, which gets us into trouble when, it, when we're talking about cancer and excessive growth. But so, you know, the shock value of sugar being the demon for carbohydrate and, and obesity and diabetes. Remember, we measure the blood for blood sugar, glucose. We don't measure it for blood fat. We don't measure blood seed oils. We measure blood glucose. So in susceptible people who can have diabetes and obesity, don't listen to this. <laughs> this is really looks like some influencers who are bodybuilders and, and getting into the idea of protein restriction, which allows the body to behave in a certain way, reminds me of the ultra low fat diet, uh, even the rice diet at Duke University, where I live and where I practice, was an approach where you would eat rice a little bit of fruit and fish, not much protein. And it was ultra low calorie for the weight loss side of things. And the directors of the program said, well, the protein requirement from the USDA and government is wrong. 
you don't need to have that much protein. Well, it looks like the science is saying that if you limit the protein, you can actually run your body on other fuels and have some inefficiencies, the mitochondrial decoupling idea, and you can lose weight. So that doesn't mean that it's the healthiest way to do it. So I'm thinking, you know, as far as diets go, there are healthier ways to lose weight. As far as drugs go, there are healthier ways. There are surgeries that help you lose weight. And for a weight loss kind of thing, maybe this is something you'd want to do, but not as a lifestyle. You know, the saying I have is show me a paper of people doing this for six months, measuring all the met metabolic parameters, and, and I'll comment on it if, for a lifestyle. And then the susceptibility issue is really important. Consider the source of the teachers. If you see people who are you know, losing 100 pounds on the sugar diet in a healthy way, then I'm gonna listen. It, it, it may apply to my clinical patient population, but if it's a bunch of people who are already lean and healthy and they're doing it for bodybuilding, that's a different purpose. And I wouldn't look, think about this and even though you're probably listening wondering, can I really go back to that sugar? No, I don't want you to. And in the first kind of misstep here in the explanation is that yes, insulin is a fat storing hormone among other things. It also helps build muscle. In fact, if you look up insulin, it's actually considered anabolic. That's right, helps you build muscle. So if you're using sugar as the scapegoat for what has been considered the obesity epidemic, you'll notice that sugar consumption in this graph has severely been restricted over the last few decades, and yet obesity has continued to rise. Why? You know, I, I've seen this kind of figure now in several venues, and it, it's a mistake to think that something that is at a harmful level, even though it's decreased, is not a cause for something that's going up. <laughs> You know, it was almost to the point in a, in a lecture I saw recently that, you know, duh, how can sugar be causing it? Because it's, it's going down and obesity is going up. Well, it's because it's still at a high level that it, it's still harmful. Kind of like if you're out in the sun, the sun's not increasing over time, but the longer you are in the sun, the more burned you get. It, no one would question that. So the longer you're exposed to this, the, the and if it's at a, toxic level of sugar or carb consumption, you may see diabetes and obesity go up even though carbohydrate is flat. I don't understand this logic. Because it's not sugar that's the problem. It's the excess of calories that we're taking in and the decrease of activity that we are doing. So how do we resolve this? Well, one way is to take an extreme approach to dieting like the sugar diet, where you take in mostly just sugar but you avoid other macronutrients, specifically fat. Why fat? Fat is very high in calories. It actually has more than twice as much calories as the same grams in carbohydrates. So when you are completely eliminating one macronutrient group, war on carbs, carnivore, keto, and now sugar diet, which is a complete 180, I guess the next diet will be like the zero protein diet. No, 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 don't do it. zero protein. And so I'm not against sugar. I'm not against the sugar diet. Really, my opposition comes down to this. My message is one of understanding that all macronutrients are valuable. Protein, obviously. Fats, obviously. Carbohydrates, obviously. Just be aware. The sugar diet is here. Let's talk about it. Let me know your questions below. But yeah, I love me some Pop-Tarts and I love me some steak. <laughs> well, so what's fascinating is the science about the sugar diet or the keto diet or low protein diets actually has similarity. And in a sub-study of the Stanford study, they looked at ultra low fat, high carb, and ultra low carb, high fat, and both of them had improvements in insulin resistance in that context. It wasn't super high sugar. But so actually when someone is doing a sugar diet, they do eat some protein and, and some fat, but not much. So what's going on metabolically is that the low protein nature of these extreme, more extreme diets allows for metabolic in inefficiency. But you know, it's not something you'd want to do in the long run. 
And so as an obesity medicine expert, I could use diet, I could use pills and shots, and I could send someone for a weight loss surgery. And so we balance the, the benefits and the risks and, and whether you'd want to do something like this in the long run, I'd say no, not a great idea. Although some people might metabolically be able to do it. When you look at a, a more granular level, you don't want to be burning all the sugar and being inefficient with your, your mitochondria. It's like spinning your engine without, without engaging the motor. So I don't think it's a healthy way to lose weight and compared to other higher protein types of ways to lose weight, even if you did it for the short period of time. And certainly I'd like to see a study over six months before I comment on whether you should do it for a long period of time. So sorry, don't, don't go for that sugar diet, especially if you're one of my patients. Not a, not a good idea. I hope you like this. If you do, please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our YouTube membership for early access and exclusive live Q and A's with me. Just click the join button below or support us with a PayPal in the description.